Preparation consists of five principal stages. One are safety considerations. Two, the purpose or needs and uses of the fire in question. What's it going to be used for? Yeah, what's its purpose? Collection of the materials you need to make that fire and tend it, guard it, etc. Four, the preparation of materials. And five, preparation of the fire bed and area. Collection and preparation of materials. One, tinder. Two, kindling. Three, fuel, e.g. wood, peat, dung. Preparation is getting the materials ready. In terms of preparation, this means getting your tinder together, yeah, your tinder bundle, getting your kindling together to take from the tinder bundle, yeah, and getting your fuel ready, the right amount, the correct preparation of fuel in order to fulfill the purpose of your fire, yeah. It could involve such acts as buffing, scraping, sawing, chopping, cutting, shielding, and concealing it if it's a hidden fire. Furthermore, this could involve preparing for safety considerations with water, fire blankets, first aid kit, and or fire department or locality dependent requirements in having a fire. Yeah? It's preparation. You need to have your materials. So once, presuming you've got the tinder bundle, I'll show you in a minute, here is a double hand thickness. Yeah, I can't hold the camera and hold it at the same time. Believe me, that's two hand thickness, yeah? These bits here are thinner, a matchstick or thinner, yeah? Okay, then I've got a nice bundle of like pencil thin. Then I've got a nice bundle of like finger thick. Then I've got another stage up here. And then those will take to the supply of wood that I think I need to do a tin of uh, char cloth yeah so uh, I don't want to get retentive really anally retentive about this there's more than one way to skin a cat as we said or make a fire but this is a you know if you can't get it with these materials then you know, but just give you another example of some different grass spills or tinder bundles or whatever, just not tinder, rather bundles of kindling. From tinder you need something to take, that's the kindling, then you need the wood, yeah? So here's just a little, but these are spills actually, of, uh, yeah, cypress, you could have cypress seed or that sort of thing. Uh, some nice grass spills, a nice big pucker one there, yeah? Uh, another larger cypress coming apart a bit. And there's a nice uh, bunch, of, bunch of twigs there, yeah. Okay, so basically there's your prep. Now obviously if I was having a fire for the night, I would have a bit far bigger fire supply than that. The tinder being kept dry, yeah, I've got it in here. Yeah. It's a tinder bundle, multiple different types of tinder in there, yeah. Multiple. And a cold, bit of cold extender, uh, it's... Uh, Pretty much amber slightly from the white beach wound staunch shield good tinder fungus here. Yeah? Multiple different things in here. Barks, brackens, uh, several different plant downs, all sorts to be honest. Good size, you know, good couple of hands round. Okay. Thought I'd just give a, another example. So following is another tinder bundle, like the colours in it, yeah. I'm surprised that grass has stayed green, but it's uh, dead dry. Probably good bundle, yeah. Uh, and another fire prepped, yeah. Prepped for a longer fire, for the whole campfire for the night. So you see that in a second with the amazing, the ultimate, single, ultimate best tool for living or bushcraft, an Imakasan machete. Yeah, it's the ultimate, ultimate. There's no question of a shadow of a doubt about that in my mind. Uh, beats hands down everything else I've come across. If you've got one tool, yeah, did all that, all that wood next to no time, yeah, it can do fine, pretty much, you know, it can do carving up to 
sorting out your wood, yeah? Unbelievable tool. Anyway, a good flexible machete, such as the best that I've found so far, the Yamako Saba machete, yeah? Um, he's such a good friend. Anyway, that's the a nice following is good demonstration of a good bit of fire prep here. And uh, you'll see the results as well, yeah? By the way, this is not an advertisement in the sense I'm trying to sell or sell on behalf of somebody for a Makassar machettes. This is the advice of an old bushman, yeah? Not wanting people to waste a lot of money on fancy goods. Yeah? There's other good machettes. Machettes, yeah? Tramontillo. Yeah, there's probably others. I believe Condor's related to a Makassar. You know, there's, there's lots of good machettes out there. Just happen to know Makassar is up tip top. There's other great tip top ones as well. Laying. This term refers to making the structure of the materials in order to burn, i.e. its shape or form, e.g. teepee, pyramid, platform fire, etc. Uh, several of the following fires, yeah, are not great examples necessarily of shape, but they're examples of our setting and use, yeah, needs and use, yeah. But several are great shapes. Following are a few examples, yeah? First one is teepee, yeah? A real tall teepee like that. It goes up, they go up real quick. It's a brilliant way to start a fire. So you'll see on the, the solid fire later, I make a little teepee-like structure on top to get it going, yeah? Uh, but a structure like that's likely to, to tumble down once you've had an exciting start and you can rearrange your shape, yeah? You can keep a teepee going, but it would probably be a lower armour less severe one than the one demonstrated. Nice fire though, eh? Um, then you'll see, different people have different names for them, yeah? The next one pretty much looks like a log cabin, doesn't it? Or even a, yeah, it looks like a log cabin. So that's what a lot of people call that one. Yeah, log cabin. The downfall of those can be if you don't put enough in the centre, often all you get is a lighting around the outside and nothing in the middle. That's not what you want. You want a fire with a heart. So you need to put, as you'll see, in the, I've put a nice chunk on. Yeah, you have to make sure you keep a heart in that fire. Then you'll see um, a star fire, a four-pronged fire, a four-directions fire. Anyway, a three-pointed uh, star is a real proper native design as well. And of course, a four-directions is, yeah, seven is, you know. Anyway, star fires are great. Gradually feed your, your wood in. There you'll see ash, you know, uh, one of the few woods that dry all green fit to burn before the queen you know um and then you see a solid fire yeah with yeah as i said a teepee or a pyramid structure made on top to get it going yeah now that i cottoned onto that which is in this particular one you can make it with small bits which i do in this film yeah a small uh, solid fire but this one is like yeah pieces um like three to five feet long Nice big chunks, yeah. That last surprising how amazingly well that fire lasts. Now I got that idea from probably one of the best books ever written on bushcraft and one of the best um, knowledge knowledges about bushcraft in the world. You cannot beat this book, really. Richard Graves, unbelievable good book of that. A real classic. Most people don't even know about it. Yeah, proper good. Yeah. So anyway, he says it's you know it's pretty much the best campfire, yeah, the all-round campfire, and I agree. Unbelievably good. So this isn't an exhaustive look at all the different t types of fire. You see more in the film, a lot more. But uh, this is the five phases of fire making with just a few different examples here. Yeah. Cheers.
following is just a little photo of Don Chano and Mama Inez, mountain Mayan elders, yeah, from San Pedro de Casta in Peru. Yeah, they're cooking, yeah, in their kitchen. And then there's a little clip of Don Chano having a laugh in Smoky Kitchen, which he was. <laughs> Great people. Soñaba la señora Inés con esa mujer. Yo no me sueño con mujer porque yo de una vez lo agarro para esposa. Yo no voy a estar rogando. <laughs> yeah. This was a cool scene in Sumatra, yeah? Travelling down the road, coming out of Bukit Tigapulu, big national park, yeah, beautiful place. And I stopped at this roadside restaurant. They're massive, massive um, wood fires doing their commercial cooking, yeah, on, on proper log fires. Little shot of their children's earth or 20 count lodge, musical inauguration. The following clip you'll see a, a burning brand, yeah, or, or a, an ember brand, yeah, being used with copal in the Amazon jungle t for the manufacture of the blow dart, one of the t main traditional hunting instruments. Yeah, you know, a friend of mine stayed up with their manufacturing it, proper good. Manufacture of the armament, the weapon. Weapon. Using traditional materials. It goes a kind of orangey bubbly, but you can't see it from here. Wow. Yep, you can down in the tree down there, it works a beauty. Someone's going to nip down and get it. These little monkeys. Monkeys. Yeah. Get in the water. Monkeys. 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 Can you learn capoeira all day? Do you want to learn? Yes. Very good, very good. Capoeira. I'm going to teach capoeira. I'm going to teach capoeira. They're teaching me the local skills. Pecuna making, blow dart making. First, first of birimba, second of birimba, third of birimba. Give me a respect for here. Give me a respect for here. Give me a respect for here. Bien. Entra, muy cuidado, todo el tiempo mira otra persona, no, no, no caminando rueda. Entra con movimiento de capoeira, muy cuidado, muy bien. Mira otra gente todo el tiempo. Movimiento natural, con de jinga también. Muy bien. Eh, voy para allá.
Fire hardening tools from digging sticks to spears. It's a traditional thing done by Aboriginals, yeah? So here we're actually larking at it a bit. We do tons of spear throwing, YD, and obviously it's a massive part of native games, yeah? Following is a little bit of film in the forge, yeah? It's an amazing forge. I was with my friends Pat Daliman, Pat Sapri and Pat Choco. Those two real good good guys, yeah? Traditional or uh, well, modern traditional Chris makers in Solo Mojo Songo East, East Java. It's a slightly unusual method of forging going on in it. Yeah? A real good laugh down there doing that. Making three knives, I wanted to make three knives with those guys. A small bush knife, a large bush knife, and you sort of parang styles, a short sword, sword parang size knife, which you see me working on in this one with the guys. After that, I wanted to make my own axe. Uh, so I called on a good friend, Spencer Larkham, who's a great you know, artistic blacksmith, and I asked for his advice and help on making an axe, a proper, not just a little hatchet out of one piece of metal, but your proper axe where you've you're using two different metals, yeah? But for the front, you've got a different metal for the blade, yeah, like a high carbon steel set into the other uh, steel. So you see a little, little bit of that axe making as well. And so these are uses of fire, other uses of fire, yeah? Yeah. 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 Wah, kita untuk lemah sarti. to this temperature thoroughly through, it'll take all the stress out of the metal and like basically normalise it so all the crystals in the metal, all the grains are the same again. Brilliant. They're all the same as when we started. It's a nice shot there man. And buddy, uh, Jose was working on the Pacuna there, yeah, the blow dart. And this is our uh, Pablo, who who was a great friend. He took us into his uh, Yagua village, put us up with his family, and you know took care of us and so on and so forth. Real great guy. He's just talking by the family cooking fire and and hearth fire in the in the in the Yagua village in their home. Ofrece lo que es parte de la de la cultura donde el Amazonas pues cuenta, el Amazonas es muy limpio, muy, muy acogedora, muy tranquilo, no hay delincuencia, no hay la guerrilla, no hay el secuestro, absolutamente es nada. Pues... This is a clip from one of the best times in my entire life, amazing time in uh, 
Costa Rica and Nicaragua, but particularly down in, in just amazing time in Costa Rica, incredible family and friends, yeah? Dennis, coconut seller and ice cream, you know, so lollipop maker, proper nice person, sort of took me into his family with Maria. And then with their friends, it, um, Maria was a Buenos Aires Indian, and they had these friends, um, Bienvenido, a superb hunter, amazing, great, followed the tracks, the signs, Amazing guy, yeah. And then India, his wife, yeah. And we're down by the river with our uh, Kayleen here. And these people, I was, they said, let's get some stuff and light a fire, yeah. I went, a couple of sticks. By the time I came back, they lit the fire. Yes, I couldn't believe it. Anyway, it's a nice little shots. Here's the other lid, lid for lid. And the other plates. And I've got to admit, I've never ever seen a fire put together that quickly. By the time I picked up my oh, sticks in a couple of minutes, I came back. The rocks were in, the fire was lit. Rico. Rico, Kaylin. Rico. Ah, muy bien. Ahora cuando él está comiendo, también sáquelo, ¿ok? Oye. Ah, maravilloso, señor. Here's a little shot in the kitchen of Crisilda, amazing hunter. You know, like just as Bienvenida and Crisilda, two of the greatest hunters I've, I've come across. Proper amazing. Best shot I've ever seen with a spear. Unbelievable. So good. Uh, and he, he, we just, he's just having a little chat and cooking up some chantadura on on their fire. He's Takuna, Takuna Indian friend, and, and like married into the family of the Yaguas with um, Pablo, yeah? So you stay down, you were invited in, stay down with Crisilda and his family, went off fire, doing loads of stuff in his jungle, proper good man. Natural, dulce natural. Boa, de acá de indígena ticuna. Sembra producto muy bien. Todo legal. Muy legal. Ahora, acá, cocina chanta duro, ¿no? Muy bien. I might get this. Shambi. Move in. Professional. Here's a beauty, yeah. 
love it. Platform fire. One to build in your swamps, yeah. You're going out there's there's no solid dry ground about, you know. Do it so you may have to make a fire like this. And look up uh fire and water. Fire swamp, yeah, on my Apache Wolf Scout channel you see in more detail, but it's a good one, isn't it? Lighting a fire, yeah, in our in the water, in a swamp, yeah. Uh, where conditions demand that you, you take the fire up out of the sodden waterlogged ground, yeah? Yeah, you've checked the safety. You've considered what fire you need for what purpose and you've collected the woods, the tinders, the kindling, yeah? And you're ready to go. So the next stage, we call it laying, yeah? Laying a fire lay somebody to bed, you lay a fire on the bed, yes sir. Because I've got a little ember in a beautiful tinder bundle I'm blowing to flame, I want to put that to bed, yeah. I want to lay a nice dry bed for that fire. I don't want to lay it on the damp ground in case it, it's, it's not going to like it, yeah. Ground. So I lay my baby on a nice dry bed. Yes sir. Yeah, I've made a bed. I've made it slightly ceremonial, yeah, because it's, it's a special fire. So I've got sage and rosemary in the centre, caught with cones to the four directions. Nice, nice bed. The fire here, it isn't a ceremonial fire, yeah? But I did lay it with, yeah, something of a reverence, uh, a real respect for nature, the trees, the plants, etc., you know? So here's the fireplace. I don't need a, a, sometimes you can circle with stones, you've got to be careful if they crack. You don't want your stones to go cracking and splattering on you, yeah? Here we don't need it. This, this grass hereabouts is not going to take off into a conflagration. We're nowhere near trees, um, rocks that could be heated and crack. So I'm looking at a rock face. So there, there, that's the laying of the bed, yeah? Is is the actual laying of the fire, not just laying the bed of the fire, yeah? So you've got to decide on your shape, which is obviously or your form, and it's our uh, shape and form. That's related to your purpose, yeah? So I'm just going to make a simple shape that suffices for me to make a nice big bed of embers, big enough to, to just do my, my task. But I'm going to lay it, you know, it's not what you do, the way you do it to a degree sometimes. For ceremonial, ceremonial fights, it certainly is. It, you, know, you could do all sorts of complex forms, but if you don't do it with like a, a, a like a sacred, a careful, a really, you know, a loving, a tender way, then it doesn't matter how fancy it is, yeah? You could do something really, it looks sexual, but you really love. Hopefully, actually, just put the two together. A real nice form, and and yeah, I want to lay it down nice, just because. Why not? It's something to do. Do something beautiful. Yeah. It's not going to be real fancy. It should be quite a simple shape. But I'm I'm going to take my time and just lay it with a bit of reverence for the for the wood that comes from the trees, which are the you know there they are the trees of life. We have a green planet. And it's our duty to honour that, honour the things that give us life, the sun, the earth, the water, the plants, the trees, the creatures, you know, the earthworms, the bumblebees, the bats, and, you know, the, the fire, the air, <sighs> yeah, so, I don't always do that. But today, yeah, I'm going to remember when I make this fire a little bit. And I'm going to... Now I've laid out a, a, a fire base, yeah. I've got our... Okay. Laid out a fire base, yeah. And then I've got my kindling my next levels which I'm just going to make a fire on top. This is a fire for this situation yeah but you could be making a fire reflector say you've got a shelter you know for example you're sleeping in it you want the, and it's an open-sided shelter you want your reflector built so that it reflects heat back in back onto you yeah 
you may be needing to make windshields yeah, around your, your fire or you may be needing to make a cover for your wood store and or your fire so all these are things that you could need to consider yeah, or be able to do That's some of those will be covered in the full film but this is just this fire and these considerations setting stage 3 ignition of fuel traditionally using a technique from one of the nine families in order to generate an ember or sparks and then usually this is used in order to light the tinder and this in turn to light the main fire proper okay so in a sec we're going to get a bit of lump of flint picked up in dorset and a little uh open ale knife which has got a good carbon steel strike some sparks onto some charcoal cloth we made before let's make a fire get some charcoal cloth and uh, spark it up so there's the scene fire prepped now I've got my wood up off the ground as well yeah so I don't want that to be soaking yeah I've got that on the, the tin the kindling everything is up off the ground yeah anyway so we've uh, done the First steps now we're gonna make a fire and we'll yeah setting a fire yeah setting a fire set a fire set a blaze yeah so uh, you can call you can actually call laying it setting it as well but yeah giving it those uh, three different names there but yeah setting a fire is 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 a is an awesome name you know, from, from you know blazing it yeah and yeah let's do it Charcloth, yeah. Piece of charcloth. Tinder bundles just right in behind the camera, so it's all ready to go. Put that into the tinder bundle now, yeah? Yeah? That's pretty good, yeah? So now, we're going, yeah? Happy days, yeah? Okay. So? goes there. Don't forget that usually it's best to bring your tinder bundle yeah up off the ground to ignite it yeah. The ground level tends to be colder yeah you know heat rises and also there's less air down there yeah bring it up into the oxygen yeah a good way is actually just fanning it figure of eight or up and down or blow it. Any whatever way you do it Try not to let the, the ember burn its way through or get lost, yeah? So if you, you care for it, basically, but usually bring it up. But here, because I want to film myself, it's pretty difficult to do all that while you're trying to do all the jobs at once, yeah? So I had to just keep it there. It worked fine. So, yeah, you don't want to be sort of, as I said, ainly retentive about it. There's different ways to do things, but in general, better to bring it up. Happy, remember happy. Bagus sekali, terima kasih. Gonna get it going, the bundle a bit better, yeah, first. Okay, so that's not going anywhere now. Got a nice. Dang! Neglected to film kindling going up properly. Tell you what, at the end of the last clip, if you want to see it, press pause and you can you can see it there. Here, I've recreated a similar tinder and kindling.
just for you. <laughs> Tending, stage four. All the acts involved in caring for a fire. Tending, stage four. This is all the acts involved in caring for a fire. Yeah, such as feeding the fire, e.g. adding additional fuel, restructuring the fire. As the fire burns, yeah, the wood will find different shape and you may have to restructure it to keep it, keep it burning well. You'll be fanning it maybe, blowing it, coaxing it. You're essentially also guarding it Guarding it from, uh, you know, children, for example, hurt, hurt themselves, or from the fire itself going out of control. Generally, taking care of it, guarding is like an aspect of that. Yeah, and you may even have to sing to it if you're doing a ceremonial fire. You'll be singing to it. Basically, it's all the acts involved in caring for a fire, or that that could involve. Tending is the name for it. One of the beautiful and fascinating things about fire around the world in different places is not only is the act of making fire by friction say or even by percussion synonymous with acts of uh, procreation in the natural world between men and women but all, and also in, in other in other areas of life yeah between the masculine and the feminine creating a new life which is synonymous with the ember yeah but the whole process, as we, as we said in this, putting the ember, you know, laying a bed, laying the, t the, um, the tinder onto the bed, you know, fanning it into flames, coaxing it, and feeding your fire like you feed a baby, yeah? Feeding that child, yeah? It's, it's really beautiful that so many aspects are synonymous with caring for life, tending for, you know, you tend to a baby, you coax it, you know, you feed it, you lay it down. So, yeah, you know, you, you pick up gently your baby, you tend to your baby, you feed your baby, and you know what? Yeah, you sing to your baby. If you really love someone or something, and certainly a baby, you sing to it. Yeah. There's fire dances too, of course. And it's synonymous with these things, yeah, these fundamental acts of life, the spark of life, yeah? You give the spark of life. The man, the woman, you know, the act. Yeah? What do you do when you're making fire? What does it look like? Jeepers creepers. It's, it's, it's a really beautiful thing. An amazing thing. So yeah, I've tended it a bit. I've shaped it a bit. And I'm making a few more embers. A bit more of an ember bed. In preparation, we had purpose or needs and uses of the fire as this determined much of the preparation and later stages. Here it is to make char cloth and to fulfill an inner need to sit beside a fire. And I try to make a big tin of char cloth here. Yeah? Cut up a bit of old, old jeans, um, small hole in the top, and then set a fire. And basically, you want to put it onto the to the embers more, yeah. So I'm not going to put it like in a roasting fire. But a roasting fire, just pull that apart a bit and sit it in the embers, yeah. All I've done is I've separated out the main pieces to either side, yeah. And I've got the ember bed down the middle there, and I've put on my tin, which is the, this is a, a big big tin to be honest. And I've got the you pierce a hole, small hole in the top. It's lightly packed with, uh, in this case, cut up cotton jeans. And God willing, once the um, any all the smoke has stopped or any flames and smoke stopped coming out of that hole which is starting a while, beautiful actually, then you pretty much know it's done because you check it. Yeah, so there we go. Now I'm at the stage of tending and, and, and using the fire for the purpose of making charcoal and enjoying it. That's nice. More like it. You kind of get, you know, like an official basis for teaching to, yeah. to martial arts. You know, that has been the types. trouble, big trouble in Capoeira because totally unorganised. It never has been. I mean, which is, yeah. 
part of its beauty is its sort of rebelliousness and, and freedom, but at the same time, it's, it's a nightmare and a teaching. Geronimo! Hey, taking the charcoal off, off, check it in a while. Beautiful little fire left. Really appreciate it. Look at that beauty. Sat around chatting to Dave and Marla for quite a while. and be nice. A fire's a great thing. Thank you, Papa Api. Grandfather Tatiwari. Grandfather. Ah, the calm of the night. The solace of the fire. Isn't it solace? Following is a quick uh, photo story of another fire, just because it looks good. I like it. Enjoy it. Yeah. Ending the final fifth phase. Ending may comprise, for example, someone watching the final embers out as in a ceremonial fire. It may comprise actively putting the fire out, for example, dousing with water. It may comprise leaving the fire be. Or Dispersal and tidying up of the area, potentially as concealment, as in someone trying to hide their tracks, or in order to leave the area as found with respect to the land. The five phases and numerous stages and elements are but an elegant description of possible methods. They do not describe hard and fast rules. Fire can be made and described differently. Some of the stages or phases may be skipped entirely. You may do things without the ideal tinder bundle or kindling bundle, etc, etc. But it's an elegant, useful description, particularly the five phases. Take me back to the fire! <laughs> This is, I guess, real magic and beauty without a doubt. I mean, science can explain a lot of it, but it can't get to the heart of it. The heart of it is what you experience and what you feel, what is. Mysterious wonder, profound peace, and magic. Which, yeah, we're super, supremely grateful. Gift of light, gift of fire, gift of beauty. Ah, <sighs> hundred of that.
Thanks very much for watching and listening, and I hope you enjoyed it. Apache Wolf Scout. All the best. Have fun. And be safe. And enjoy your time with fire.